We've just had um, the celebrations of July 4th, which um, causes us to think back to the founding of America and the great uh, spirit in which this country was launched, launched out of tyranny and launched into freedom. But uh, for the first time, I think, this year and all the time I've been in America, my sense of uh, excitement and celebration was tempered by a feeling of foreboding. Not a sense of personal foreboding at all, but rather a foreboding for the country. Um, Has the American experiment been unwound? Has it been subverted? Uh, Are we living in the America that the founders would have wished? Uh, What would the founders think if they were alive today? So uh, July 4th for me had this sort of double meaning, a sense of mixed emotions, you might say, because I look around and I look at the way in which the left is trashing uh, not just our culture, not just our founding faith, Uh, but trashing our institutions one after the other. And ultimately, if you think about the architecture of the American founding, it was a building of um, institutions. It's so strange, but um, we have two fundamental concepts in the founding, the concept of civil rights, but also the concept of civil liberties. Civil rights, of course, has to do with anti-discrimination. It has to do with all men are created equal. But civil liberties has to do with our basic ability to speak our mind, um, express and practice our faith, our freedom of conscience, our freedom of assembly, our freedom of private space, no unreasonable search and seizure. And uh, it is uh, paradoxical to say the least that civil rights is being invoked now by the left to cancel civil liberties. We're systematically racist and therefore we have to ban hate speech. And of course, hate speech here isn't really hate speech. If you think of what the digital censors are doing, they're not censoring hate speech. They're censoring differences of opinion. Uh, And differences of opinion and the expression of those differences is critical to democracy. So our founding experiment is in in trouble. Now, here's Cori Bush, one of the left-wingers, part of the the gang, uh, the, the squad, in Congress, she says, when the 4th of July, when they say the 4th of July is about American freedom, remember this, the freedom they're referring to is for white people. The land is stolen land and black people still aren't free. Now, I'm trying to wrap my head around this concept of blacks aren't free. In what sense is Cori Bush not free? Is she not free to um, go about her business? Is she not free to speak her mind? Is she not free to uh, cast her vote? She's in Congress. Uh, She has all the freedoms that the founders listed, and yet she feels unfree. And and how can that really be? Well, I think the answer to that comes from a line uh, in Mary Chestnut's um, diary. Mary Chestnut was the wife of the South Carolina Senator uh, James Chestnut. This is in the period of the Civil War. And Mary Chestnut was a defender of the Confederacy. And she makes this startling statement, which is once the Civil War has already begun, the um, the Northerners, the Republicans, the Yankees are talking about how terrible slavery is. And Mary Chestnut writes this. She goes, now, if slavery is as disagreeable to Negroes as we think it, why don't they all march over to the border where they would be received with open arms? It amazes me. What she's getting at is she's basically saying, well, the slaves must be happy. Why? Because our men are all at the front. Uh, We can't, the women and children, by force, uh, hold the slaves. If the slaves wanted to leave, they could. So from Mary Chestnut's point of view, what she's basically saying is slavery must be, these slaves must sort of like it here because they could leave, but they're choosing not to. But I think there's, a, there's another way to read what she's saying. What she's really talking about is the captivity of the mind. What she's saying is that we have the slaves not just by fetters uh, or chains binding them to the plantation. We've kind of taken over their minds. We ha- we've subjected them to a mental captivity. So while in theory they could leave, 
their minds keep them here. They're scared to leave. They feel dependent on the plantation. Uh, the, the plantation has become a psychological prison. And here I think we have an insight into what the Democratic Party has actually done to blacks. They have subjected blacks to a kind of mental captivity. Um, and so when Cori Bush says, I don't feel free, in a way, I guess she's right. She is a captive of a mental prison created in the inner cities by the Democratic Party, holding, if you will, uh, not just African Americans, but other minorities in a certain kind of certain kind of uh, subjection. Now, in a broader sense, I think for the rest of us who are free, but who nevertheless recognize that our freedoms are being encroached upon, our Second Amendment right um, to bear arms, our First Amendment right to speak, our First Amendment right uh, to go to church. Uh, and no, uh, the left uh, is saying they can restrict the churches under lockdown uh, laws, that they can block free speech in all kinds of ways. And while they say that this is being done by private platforms, it's private platforms that are um, cheered on and uh, pushed on uh, in the censoring direction by uh, organs of the state. Uh, and we see the deep state being unleashed against conservatives and against patriots and against Trumpsters. So all of this means that, that to some degree, we have to keep the spirit of 1776 very much alive. And by that, I mean, quite literally, the revolutionary spirit. I don't just mean the spirit of thinking back nostalgically to the founding, but keeping inside of us that flame that drove the founders to say enough is enough. Um, the founders, let's remember, responded even to relatively minor forms of subjection. Um, con confiscatory taxes, um, the Declaratory Act, the Stamp Act. The reason that they responded so fiercely is because they recognized that in principle, if they conceded to the Declaratory Act and the Stamp Act, it gave the British Parliament the right to subject them in all matters whatsoever. And the founders were like, no, you're not doing it now, but this is the direction in which you are pushing. And that's exactly what's happening in America today. Uh, no, we aren't living in the gulag. No, we're not living in communist China. But the end point of where the left is pushing is in fact communist China, is in fact tyrannical Venezuela, is in fact some kind of America as a prison camp in which we become, you may almost say, an occupied people. Now, I realize there's, there's a part of the country that is okay with all this. Uh, I would call that the Chavista wing of America. Those are the people who want to subjugate the rest of us. But there's a large part of the country that doesn't want this kind of subjection, that wants to live in the same spirit of freedom that the founders intended. We are the true heirs of 1776, and we better not forget it.